So in my recent journey along the pathless path of self-discovery and productivity research, I am very excited to present to you a brand new framework I have developed for the ultimate life hack in goal setting, Swamp Goals. You've probably heard of SMART goals, specific, measurable, blah, blah, blah. Swamp Goals are what you need to get your priorities straight and turn your life around. So there you have it. If you haven't already clicked off of this video to immediately implement this framework into your life, you might have a few more questions about the true essence of Swamp Thing. And luckily, I'm here to help with a quick look into what may possibly be the paramount example of what's possible with Swamp Goals, Swamp Thing on the NES. Denounced by many, but after wiping away some of the toxic waste, I believe this to be a misunderstood classic. Swamp Thing came out fairly late in the life cycle of the NES, December of 1992, published by THQ and developed by Imagineering part of a merchandise marketing push following the very short-lived animated series in 1991, which only ended up with a run of five episodes. The game's intro sets up the somewhat scorching origin story of Alec Holland, and we are quickly dumped into the chaotic and absolutely vicious trash-filled bayou as Swamp Thing. You may quickly see, hear, and feel some similarities to Bart vs. the Space Mutants, if you've played that before, as Swamp Thing resourcefully borrows the same game engine and many sound effects from past Imagineering classics. Shout out to the Meowing Snake. But one of the most important pieces of knowledge you will need on your Swamp Goal journey is the fact that run and jump are the same button. If you lack the determination to succeed in this game, this quirk is probably an immediate turnoff, but I would argue that learning to adapt to this unique control situation is an important life skill, as utilizing whatever tools you have at hand will get you compounding results beyond your wildest imagination. So if you can get ahead of 99% of people by actually finishing level 1, you're on a road to surefire success as you work your way through a nice variety of levels with some precise platforming, hidden areas housing extra health and additional lives, and even some creative moments where you become one with various types of plant life. I do wish there were more implementations of this, but they're a fun addition. You'll also face off with a few bosses, Demo, Weed Killer, and Skin Man, until your eventual final showdown with Anton Arcane himself. Overall, I really like the gritty but very cartoony feel to everything, and the gameplay actually starts feeling pretty great once you get the hang of things. I'm also drawn to the raw but charming soundtrack by Mark Van Heck, who also scored many other Imagineering -in games around that time. The music getting cut off by jump sound effects is a bit unfortunate, but luckily there's no time limit, so you're basically free to find a nice spot to twerk like no one is watching. I will say that learning the speedrun was probably helpful for accelerating my skill growth and increasing my appreciation for the game, and a sub-15 time remains one of my current swamp goals in life. But the most important life lesson takeaway here is how to have fun with what you have. Obviously Swamp Thing isn't the most polished product, but underneath a bit of sludge and muck is a truly rewarding and challenging adventure if you're willing to put in a bit of extra effort. I'm sure you have other things going on out there in the real world, but I propose that if you can add a proper swamp goal to your to-do list and follow through, your life will never smell the same again.